Good morning and welcome to another of our Acts of Worship. Welcome if you're very good at high tech. Welcome if you would prefer to be having your fingers in the garden somewhere. Welcome if your idea of combining the high tech with the gardening is bunging some frozen peas in the microwave. Everyone's welcome. Today we've got a bit of a, an agricultural theme. You'll hear that in our reading which Janet and Colin are going to bring us. And we'll also see some uh, images of people preparing for Spelthurst's Scarecrow competition that's coming up. John P will be speaking about the Bible passage and it's his birthday today. So we say, happy birthday, John. Julie will be sharing in my story. Mark and Becky will not only be uh, leading our musical worship, they're also leading our prayers this week. Let's start by lighting our candles and greeting one another with words of peace. Peace be with you. Thank you. We have an opportunity now to be still in God's presence and to open us uh, ourselves uh, to his presence so that we become a new creation in him. You'll see the words on the screen. Father God, we know that fear and other emotions get in the way of our friendship with you. We want to let go of all the things that get in the way. Father God, we thank you that your love casts out fear. We want to receive your love. Jesus, we know you are holy and the things we do wrong spoil our friendship with you. We want to put down our bad habits and the things that we do that get in the way. Jesus, we thank you that you have paid the price for all the things we do wrong. We want to receive your forgiveness. Holy Spirit, we want to put down and let go of all our wrong attitudes and thinking. Holy Spirit, thank you that you comfort and guide us into all truth. We want to receive your wisdom. Amen. And now we're going to sing together separately, I am a new creation.
My story started back in the 1960s when I was growing up in a quietly Christian family. We went to church on high days and holidays and I dutifully went to Sunday school and later on the youth group until I was about 16. After that, my church attendance was pretty sporadic, few and far between before I moved to Spelthurst, of course. But although not attending a church, I believe that my family and I were brought up in a fairly Christian lifestyle, though perhaps with a small c. I was brought up by two loving parents who always cared for others before themselves. We were taught to love our neighbours and generally tried to live in a way that I'm sure would resonate with most of you today. However, there were many low points in that intervening period with serious illness, relationship breakups and other difficult times. And during those periods, I would sometimes pray to God, even though I didn't have a really strong relationship with him. But God had a plan, unbeknownst to me. He blessed me with various skills and experiences that many years later I am now able to use for his kingdom. We're all given many gifts and mine included a love of music and singing and confidence to stand on a stage in front of thousands of people, whether to sing or present marketing strategies in my job. He guided me to my husband, Edward. We had two beautiful children and I'm now convinced that he was in on the decision to move to this beautiful village. We hadn't even heard of Spelthurst when we were thinking of moving from working where we were living then. But having been gazumped on a house in Tunbridge Wells on the day we were due to exchange, We randomly viewed Kent Cottage, made an offer the same hour, sitting on a bench in the village wreck, and moved in six months later with two very young children. After just a few months here, I joined the church choir, mainly, if I'm honest, just to enjoy the experience of singing again, and also to get out of the house for a peaceful hour or two. But I had no idea at the time how much my life would change with that simple decision. Not only did I meet many lovely people from the village who made me so welcome, but I restarted my relationship with God. Now I'm part of a weekly home group and a fortnightly huddle who all help me grow my faith and my Bible knowledge, as well as making me feel so loved and supported in my daily life. I absolutely love singing in church and I'm really missing it at the moment. And I've taken on various roles within St Mary's and elsewhere. And I'm sure my faith helped me to get my job as a part-time receptionist at Bennett Memorial, where I really enjoyed meeting the parents and children, especially the ones from this village. I have a voluntary role in Operation Christmas Child, an amazing charity sharing God's love with children throughout the world through simple shoebox gifts. And I've even had the opportunity to go to Africa to hand out boxes, a truly humbling and inspirational experience. So God always has a plan. And I can't believe I'm going to quote a Bible reference here, but as Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you. Sometimes it takes us a while to join him in it, But in my experience, he waits patiently, guiding and lovingly encouraging us, and it always works out in the end. Thank you, everyone at St Mary's, for your love, encouragement and support of me and my wider family. We love you and can't wait to see you all again in church one day. And in the meantime, I hope to see you in the village shop. Spring has moved into summer since lockdown began. And there are many things that we haven't been able to do over these past few months. But one of the things most of us have enjoyed is walking in the countryside that surrounds us and watching the crops in the fields grow. Some annual events like the Ashurst Rogation Walk and Raft Race or the Spelthurst Pram Race and Fate have had to be cancelled. But knowing that we had the reading of the Sower and the Seed today reminded me that there is a bit of good news. The Spelthurst Scarecrow competition is still going ahead. This year, the scarecrows need to be ready for the beginning of August. So to whet your appetite for what might be in store this year, some of the toddler praise families have sent in pictures of their entries from last year. I hope you enjoy looking at them and don't forget to look out for the new scarecrows from the beginning of August. same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables saying a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places 
where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. He explained to his disciples, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Good morning. And I thank you Colin and Janet for that reading from chapter 13 of Matthew's Gospel of the Parable of the Sower. A few years ago I received a card and on the front in bold letters it said I wanted to change the world. On the inside it read, but I couldn't find a babysitter. I guess there are occasions when we all feel like that. We have ambitions, plans, dreams even. Uh, but day-to-day -day pressures get in the way and they fall by the wayside. It's by no means the whole story, but this is what's at the heart of what Jesus is saying in the famous parable of the sower. Now we all know that one of the ways Jesus communicated was through parables. Now parables are not meant to make life easy. They're meant to grab your attention and get you thinking. In fact, in a straight translation from the Hebrew, the closest word in English would be riddle. It's as though Jesus doesn't want to spoon feed his followers. He wants them to think for themselves. He wants them to listen intently to the word of God and figure out what it means for their relationship with him in the way they lead their lives. The situation this morning's reading is that Jesus is by the Lake of Galilee and he's surrounded by a large crowd. So large that he gets into a boat and pushes out a short distance from the shore in order to address the crowd more clearly. From his seat in the boat he told them many things in parables. His audience are captivated as Jesus paints a picture that would be familiar to all of them. He begins, A farmer went out to sow his seed. But the farmer doesn't appear to be doing a particularly good job. As the story unfolds, we hear the results of the farmer's efforts are getting more and more disappointing. Some of the seed falls onto the path and is eaten by birds. Some falls on rocky ground and at first seems to do well, but the lack of soil means that it fails to take root and soon withers. Still other seed falls among thorns which grow and choke the farmer's plants. But undiscouraged, the farmer continues to sow his seed. Then the story shifts focus. There are seeds that fall on good soil and they produce an abundant harvest which yields with yields of 160 or even 30 times what was sown. Then, suddenly, Jesus seems to come to a halt and leave the parable hanging in the air. He says mysteriously, whoever has ears, let them hear. To the crowd gathered around, Jesus seems to be saying, you've got ears, 
figure it out for yourself. We miss a few verses from the Bible next and then come to the second part of the reading read by Colin. Here the scene changes. We're still in the same location but the crowd has dispersed leaving just Jesus and his 12 disciples. As the committed followers of Jesus the disciples unlike the crowd will be given the job of spreading the word of God. To do this, they'll need a deeper understanding of how to interpret God's word, and they will need a bit of encouragement too. So it's in this second part of the reading that Jesus offers a partial explanation of the parable of the sower. The farmer stands for God, and the seed stands for the word of God. Just as the farmer sows his seed on the ground, so God sows his word amongst people. And like the ground, people respond differently. First, some people are proud and independent and they sneer at the word of God and ridicule God's followers. They think they already have all the answers to life's problems and they refuse to listen to God. But like the seed that falls on the hard path, they remain exposed on the surface and are soon snatched away by the devil. A second group of people are initially enthusiastic, but quickly lose interest. At first they receive the word with joy, but another craze comes along, or they face resistance in some way, a cynical family member for example, and so they throw in the towel. They're like the seed that falls on rocky ground and show that the word never really went down and became rooted in their hearts. The third group of people are those who hear the word of God and take it on board, but soon become overtaken by the affairs of this world. They have so many interests, especially the pursuit of money, that they are easily distracted and Jesus gets pushed to the sidelines. To these people, these people are like the seed which fell among thorns, well-intentioned, but lacking the commitment demanded of a true follower of Christ. Finally, there are, there are those who listen with an open mind, never too proud or busy. They've thought their faith through and understand that it requires a lifelong commitment to growing in Christ-likeness. These people are like the seed falling on good ground with a deep-rooted love for God. They turn their faith into action and produce a harvest 30, 60 or even a hundredfold. For the followers of Jesus who accept their responsibility to share their faith with others, the parable of the sower is wonderfully encouraging. No farmer expects every single seed to germinate and produce fruit. They know that some will be blown away by the wind and end up in places where it cannot grow. But that doesn't stop them sowing. They sow with confidence that even if some seed is wasted, the harvest will still certainly come. We can become weighed down with failures and feel we labour in vain if we don't bring others to faith. But we're not to be faint-hearted the ministry of sharing the gospel must go on. Like the farmer, we are assured that the abundant harvest will surely come. But it will do so in God's way and in his time. Our job is simply to sow the seed in patience and in hope and leave the rest to God. So that's the parable of the sower. But just to remind you, parables in general, and I think the parable of the sower in particular, are not designed to give simple answers to complex questions. They're designed to get you thinking. Thinking about your relationship with God and thinking about what God's word means to the way you lead your life today. In this church, we are blessed with several home groups places of spiritual growth, where through Bible study, prayer, and in conversation with others, you can hear 
and explore the Word of God. They are places of safety and confidentiality, where you can be open about the thorns and hard places in your life. If you're not in a home group and would like to try one out, contact me or Ian Firth and we'll introduce you to one. Amen. In our prayers today, there is a simple song for you to listen to or sing as you bring your thoughts and requests to God. The words are, O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Close your eyes if you like and feel God's presence with you. Or look at the suggestions for prayer on the next few slides as the music plays. And now, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Well, once again, thank you to everyone who's been involved this week, both in front of and behind the cameras. Next week, uh, Mary will be leading our act of worship. And before then, on Wednesday, Sasha and Andrew celebrate a special wedding anniversary. So congratulations to you. We uh, conclude now by blowing out our candles and sending one another off uh, in God's presence. And, and I invite you to feed back the words to me that I say to you. So here we go. Go in peace. Go in joy, go in love. I look forward to being with you again this time next week. Now, here's the blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.